tried to take it, couldn't. Jean-Pierre Reeve drives. Offside against the English as Dusty here kicked. They were within a great deal of uh, pain. And uh, this is a real problem for anxious English eyes looking over here towards the dressing room. And it looks as if Bob Hesford is going to come on in 81. And he, I think, will play as the number two jumper and at lock. Playing as a, as a second 5-8 New Zealand style. Up with Davis. Velasca is... That's an awkward one for Dusty here. And once again, the phenomenal case of Patrick Estev. Put eye against Argentina in November in Toulouse. I reckon that's illegal according to the wording of the law. But the French forward trying to turn. I think it may be John Scott, yes. I think he was penalised for being on the wrong side. And uh, this is a very handy time early in the second half for France to chip away at England's lead. Go straight on the old-fashioned Winterbottom trying to hold it up whilst the English forward recover but France went over with the hand and it's a penalty to England bit of relief there on one or two English faces yes and but uh, Jean-Pierre Rive must be absolutely livid because uh, although the youngster is uh, inexperienced there is no real excuse at this level to miss kick from that uh, distance and it could be very costly for France today Bainbridge Jevons Jean-Pierre Reeve, who uh, may well develop tendencies towards refereeing when he retires from the game and getting a bit of practice there as he told uh, Dave Burnett that Nick Jevons had knocked on. Always there, uh, plenty to say as well, Jean-Pierre. What we must look for here when uh, the scrum half put the ball in is where the point of release comes from and the referee must be happy with it. Martinez, 1-0, that's Rodriguez, you can see the big man out to Comberadero. Brilliant move along the line there, out to the wing, and that's a marvellous try for Estev. Well, the point we watch here is although Rodriguez breaks through, it's this magnificent tackle from Camara Bero, watches off the floor, he seems to have lost it and uh, Martinez in excellent support allows his winger to go across in the corner and that was a fine try by Estev. Marvellous sleight of hand as the French back shipped the ball along. Great try and the chance here for Serge Blanco as I thought might be the case, a change of kicker, the chance for him to level the score. Well, French hats in the air because they're level at 9-9. We've played 10 minutes of the second half and England are facing the win. Cusworth. Rodriguez again, but lost control. Martinez. Once more, Blanco. Dusty here. Here returns the compliment, but uh, obviously not yet used to the strength of the wind because that blew right back at him. There's a great drive on by Condong and the French in full floor here as Comberavero kicks on. Here racing back to his own corner flag. And the referee decided that the ball was dislodged from his arms and that he didn't deliberately throw it into touch, so that would have been a penalty. And uh, France again with a kind of move that they love. Papper on board drives, Reeve takes it. The arms are up, but uh, the referee has given the try. And David Burnett was very well positioned indeed. We'll see who comes last off the floor. Papper on board is the man, and he adds to his record. That's his eighth try for France, and how about that for a prop forward? 
and uh, really the try is set up by Joan L. Bleep here. John Scott has virtually dominated that in the early part of the game. So credit must go to that man, Joan L. But pump it aboard, still had it all to do. But look at the French forward driving in to give him support. Once pump it aboard was in sight of that line. An excellent conceived try. And of course, the French always famous for their peels in the line out. Yes, I remember the days of the 50s when Lucien Mears introduced what the French called percussion, and that was it. Blanco to stretch the lead. Fifteen points to nine, and this is a favourite French move. Joannel really did the main thing. Now, what I liked about it here was that Papar on board turned, and the whole pack drove him. And you know, if he hadn't got it, Reeve would have done so. Brilliant, cohesive work, and England up against it. Fifteen-nine. Very dull here at Twickenham, but no rain so far. Pitch holding up. And England at last, a good line-out ball. Kasworth, lovely dummy but couldn't carry it on. And again, it's Rodriguez who leads the charge. Martinez, there's no cover there for England as Estev once again, like an Olympic sprinter going up that left touch line. So once more, England back on their 22. Good French taken at that line out. Bob Hesford knowing that he was going to be offside. Now it's Martinez, Comberabero along the line, Kodok new, Villascan. Villascan has Blanco in the line. Blanco with that great pace. Sella, a superb pick up. Sella going for the corner. A tackle by Swift, but the ball is down and the try has been scored. So France's other wing seller has done it and France are away out in front. And watch out the continuity of the French as the ball is moved out to the right. Dodge is a fine tackle. But here we saw the ball being moved again and it's Blanco coming in as the extra man. Allows the winger to get away. He's still got it all to do. Tony Swift has had a turn in the meantime. Really does his job quite well, but the determination of uh, Stella really got him over in the corner and uh, one cannot dispute that was another excellent French try. Ten minutes to go, 19-9 to France. England on the French 10 metres line. Penalty for pulling down. Well, referees have been asked in a ruling from the international board to be very strict indeed on pulling an opponent's jersey and taking the scrummage down. And Dave Burnett is certainly following that to the letter of the law. Dusty Hare. With a penalty goal, his side badly needed. Tried to keep it low, but who? Serge Blanco in no hurry to take this dropout, gives it instead to Comberibero. Here. Tackle by Reed. Smith, Kasworth, there's no Reed here. The great break, inside there to Winterbottom. Feeding on there to Wheeler, now it's back again to Kasworth. Brilliant stuff this, Kasworth half through. Dodge was the man who tried to take it on. In goes Hesford, Jevons, and the French offside, and it's another penalty. Now, uh, the crowd are all waiting for Steve Smith to signal another short one, but uh, in fact, he's asking Dusty here to kick for goal again. From England's point of view, it's obviously a bit of uh, fresh air to have a little bit of worthwhile possession, but uh, Jean-Pierre must be looking to his lads now. They're kicking the ball willy-nilly. Therefore, giving away possession and allowing England to counter-attack, hence the position that Dusty Air is in at the moment with its penalty attempt for goal. So Dusty here with 128 points for England. Can he stretch that total? Yes.
Well, there's no doubt about it. Dusty Air must be grateful to see that one going over. There's been a few missed penalty attempts today because one has to sympathise with the kickers. The wind is very, very difficult. But surely it's too late now for England to get back into this game. England have Bob Hesford in the five-metre line, and he moves in, so it would do against one L, but he still beats them. Martinez, Pamper and Bob that time couldn't hold it. Now it's Smith, referee playing advantage, does work dodge. Out to Davis. And he passed out there to Estev. Beautifully worked out. Kodornu was the man, Danton the hooker now. And uh, England there had created the overlap, but just couldn't make it work. That was uh, a very good decision there by the referee, Dave Burnett. It was Don Thron who came around, he did very well in support, but in uh, going to greet the English player, he used his forearm to knock him to the ground, and therefore was rightly penalised. Smith again with a short one. Beat on there to Scott. That's what again. He runs into Dan Thron. Davis in bother as well. Smith once again, Cusworth has an overlap here as it goes out to Davis. Davis clean through, beats out to Dodge. Dodge has Tony Swift. Swift going inside his man, but well tackled by Blanco. That was the best England move of the match. Tony Swift just didn't have enough room on that inside. Maybe the outward swerve would have been the one worth trying. It was quicken. And Smith. Cusworth, Dodge. There's the move again, but Swift came in that time. The wing. Left wing coming in at centre. Davis once again with the bottom. There's a chance here. Cusworth outside to Carrollton. Carrollton had here outside him as an extra man. England making tremendous efforts to pull this game their way. That was another lovely move. It gives us all food for thought to think that uh, what England may have been able to produce had they been able to have any worthwhile possession. Certainly their backs have looked very sprightly and sharp in those two moves. Just the finish that was needed perhaps in each case. Wheeler throws, tied in by Hesper, Cusworth once again. Now it's Gary Pierce rolling, now Steve Smith on there to Bainbridge. Bainbridge had Colin Smart outside him. England deep inside the French 22 and the French have been penalised for handling in the ruck. What's going to happen here? Are they going to ask for the penalty goal? Well, one or two boos around the ground. So Dusty Hare has uh, kicked a number of vital goals in the closing stages of matches for England. Can he do it again to bring them that bit nearer? Stroked it well. But pass. From Barabero touches down and it stays at 19-12 for France and we're almost into injury time. Again, Blanco having just a little rush of blood to the head there. And it's Smith once more. Pierce got it the second time. And a penalty for going over the top once again. Steve Smith again to Dusty Hare, but we've played a minute of injury time. And it all depends now on how much time referee Burnett from Ireland, David Burnett, adds on for injuries. Here then for 19.15. Oh, it just staggered over. I doubt if England have really got the time left, but of course, depends on how much uh, injury time there is. That ill discipline by the French yet again, giving England the opportunity of, uh, of a chance in the game. But really, it's that man in the green jersey, Mr. Burnett of Ireland, who really holds the match 
at the moment. Gumberabero. He is going to run it. No, he's not. Well, it might have been worth it. You never know. However, we won't know because it's a dropout and uh, Dusty here will want to try and keep this in play. So he'll look for a high one, I think. Doesn't want it too close to the touchline where France can put it away. Yevon showing any amount of fire today and it's Tuzworth going left. Out to Swift. Swift outside his man. Touch the line. Referee. Referee Dave Burnett indicates that his pal John West there had seen the foot on the touchline and on the line is enough. That wasn't straight. And uh, England actually could take the uh, throw in of the scrummage. They're going for the scrummage. They've lost uh, a little bit of ballast, of course, with uh, Maurice Goldcliffe going off. With Bob Hesford, the good, uh, strong citizen who's done a bit of locking. That's John Scott as France turned the English. Now it's Smith. Cusworth. Dodge. Dodge, where were the England forwards? He was asking himself. And so England still with the foot in. They weren't responsible for the stoppage. They just need a try to draw at 19-19. This is just about on the England 10 metres line. Scott holds and channels. Pulling down again in the scrimmage. And it's another penalty to England and they'll run this one. Smith to Cusworth, dodge on the dummy, Cusworth checking inside, he's looked a very good player now that he's got a bit of ball, that was from Winterbottom to Wheeler, fed out there to dodge once again, dodge busting through, half caught by Rodriguez, stomped down by Reeve, taken on by Smart, and into French territory, Martinez, Blanco, oh and that's disheartening for the English as they have to chase away back to their own 22, the referee's whistle goes for the end of the match, and French arms are raised in the air after a tremendous contest. A victory by just four points in the end. But a victory, I think, that uh, people in retrospect will say was thoroughly well deserved. Willie John, as Lyons manager, what did you learn today from England's performance? Well, uh, right away, could I say that, you know, it was disappointing, really, and obviously it was disappointing from England's point of view as well. Uh, but France has always been unpredictable and certainly they went out today and they took the initiative right from the start and, and they held the initiative for the, all the game through and uh, you know had they had a goal kicker well we could have been in a lot of trouble here uh, it was disappointing England didn't get the ball and I think that that simply was a big problem uh, and France then took the initiative they seemed to get the ball they had a lot of put-ins in the scrum and uh, indeed their scrum was very impressive uh, and they put England under a lot of pressure in the scrummage uh, and took the initiative from there. The Lions manager for the coming summer, Willie John McBride. And I'm not too sure that the French will be needing that luck. Well, we're here now from Ian Robertson. Three tries to nil to France, Ian. Was it uh, as emphatic as that may sound? It was really, although in fact it was just three missed tackles by England that led to the three tries. The first one, Rodriguez came round from a scrum. Winterbottom couldn't quite get across to him and Les Cusworth had the tackle. Uh, Rodriguez went straight through the tackle and that was it. The line had been breached, the defence was disorganised. Dodge had a chance if he'd been quick enough, but he'd relied on Cusworth. Once the breach had been made, there was good support play, it spun along the line, they had the overlap and they ran round and scored. And it was a smashing try, but it could have been stopped with one tackle on Rodriguez as he came to Cusworth. The second try, in fact, was a, a similar mishap. It was a peel right on the England line and Joanel palmed it back. Papper and Board had the ball, and really the English forward should have been alert to this. It was such a predictable move, and there wasn't an English forward there. The only person to hit Papper and Board five yards out was Les Cusworth. He did excellently to get there, but he went high. And the chance of a little chap like that knocking Papper and Board back was absolutely nil. He had to tackle him low and put him on the ground, and there it would have been a ruck. In fact, he went high. Winterbottom tried to get there, but he'd had to challenge Juanel at the line-out. So by the time he got there, 
Already the impetus was there, the momentum was added by Reed, quick as lightning, supporting Papel and Bord, helping him conceal the ball, the whole French tonnage piled in over the line, second try. And the third one was from, again, 30 metres out. It was a beautifully conceived move, again predictable. Blanco was poised to come in the line, and for that, the English backs all decided to drift and take one man wider out than they, they needed to. Cusworth went for Cordonier and made him pass, and it then became a straight tackle dodge on Belliscan. Belliscan made a half-outside break, and Blanco came through. Davis had overshot because he expected Dodge's tackle on Belliscan to be emphatic. They had the half overlap. Swift had to divert his attention towards Blanco. Seller galloped to the corner, and although Swift recovered very quickly, it was just the third miss tackle, three tries. That's it. Three tries, but of course it looked more fundamentally, if you like, that, that France had won the forward battle all through. They had. Their front five forwards, the tight forwards, had really destroyed England. They had them on the rack from the start, made much worse, of course, in the second half when Colclough went off, but already the cracks had begun to appear. They simply got wider in the second half. And their back row were terribly canny. They did little moves round the back. They tied in, sucked in the English back row. Jevons and Winterbottom did a lot of tackling round the base. Then the French front five piled in, and gave much better possession to their backs. And really, it was the front five and the line-out that was much tidier on the French side. And England really were in dreadful trouble from the start. On the optimistic side, they certainly won't meet a front five or a pack like that again in the championship this season.